Hello, my name is Dr. Ankur Parikh, and I'm the Medical Director of Precision Medicine at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Today, I'd like to discuss a case report about a patient of mine with metastatic lung cancer who had a good response to genomically indicated targeted therapy for over one year. According to the World Health Organization, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths worldwide. The five-year survival upon diagnosis of stage four lung cancer is less than 4%. Most lung cancers do not harbor well-known oncogenic drivers and may eventually become refractory to standard therapy. Comprehensive genomic profiling may identify genomic alterations that could suggest potential sensitivity to targeted therapy. Today, I'd like to discuss a case of a patient with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer found to have a P10 and STK11 alteration identified by comprehensive genomic profiling who responded to match targeted therapy in the background of a higher tumor mutational burden and PDL1 positivity. The patient is a 62-year-old woman with a 60-pack year smoking history who presented with stage 4 lung adenocarcinoma in September of 2012. She was found to have bilateral disease in her lungs, a right adrenal mass, and osseous metastasis at diagnosis. She did not have any driver mutations. She was then started on standard first-line chemotherapy with a platinum doublet and bevacizumab. She initially responded but ultimately had disease progression while on maintenance therapy. She started second-line and then third-line chemotherapy, however, eventually had disease progression. To identify opportunities for possible benefit from targeted therapy, a biopsy was performed on a right upper lobe mass and sent for comprehensive genomic testing. Her tumor was found to have a few mutations, notably in P10 and STK11. Her tumor also had a higher tumor mutational burden of 18.9 mutations per megabase. Her performance status precluded her from enrolling at any clinical trials, but she was still motivated to pursue therapy. Based on P10 and STK11 alterations, I decided to treat her with weekly temsorolimus by analogy to dosing for advanced renal cell carcinoma. After three months of treatment, she showed significant clinical improvement in her breathing and overall functional status. Her CT scan demonstrated a robust partial response with significant reduction of a right lung mass and pleural mass. Her quality of life significantly improved where she was able to spend more quality time with her family and loved ones. She continued to have ongoing improvement and eventually stable disease while on treatment for almost 20 months. Unfortunately, by March 2016, her scan showed disease progression and she developed worsening of her respiratory symptoms. A repeat biopsy revealed her tumor to have 80% PDL1 expression. She was started on immunotherapy with a checkpoint inhibitor, but had disease progression after three months. She was treated with one more line of standard of care chemotherapy, and after six months, the patient had further disease progression and enrolled on hospice. This case demonstrates an exceptional response to a rapamycin analog in this patient, and the underlying mechanism likely hinges on the mutations of P10 and possibly to a lesser extent STK11, which are both regulators of the downstream mTOR pathway. A more detailed explanation regarding this potential mechanism is outlined in the manuscript. In conclusion, the exceptional response observed here suggests that further assessment and investigation is warranted for P10 status in non-small cell lung cancers lacking known oncogenic drivers. Although we were unable to change the outcome from her disease, my patient experienced tremendous improvement in her lung cancer and more importantly, her quality of life while on targeted therapy for over a year and a half. I'll never forget the smile on her face when she told me about being able to see her granddaughter race at a junior car racing event. The landscape in oncology is rapidly evolving, and I hope this case helps demonstrate the value for comprehensive genomic profiling for patients and helping identify potential, targetable, innovative treatment options. Although my patient was ineligible for any clinical trials at the time, there are many current active umbrella and basket trials focused on targeted therapies to consider. For more details on this case, please feel free to read the manuscript and contact me with any questions or comments. The field of precision medicine is growing daily. And I hope this case helps emphasize the positive impact it can have on our patients. Thank you for watching.